Okay, ihr euch. Zwei, ich soll. Okay, because, um, because, because of the way I'm tying the materials I'm tying with, you can use quite a strong thread. Uh, and I'll explain it to you in, towards the end of the fly why I prefer a stronger thread on this actual pattern. So very, very simple, which you all know is you're tying in a bit of rabbit fur. So basically, it looks as if I'm going to tie a straightforward zonka to start with. So it's just, it's not cross-cut, cross it's just normal. Michael, uh, put a, any materials in front of the fly. Like that. Uh, but now I've got a black jersey on. That's fine. Right. <laughs> Let me take it off, then you can see. Um, so, so you're going to tie the material first, and then you're going to tie the material. Okay. Um, all right, so with, um, with respect to the, Marib uh, the, the Zonka strip story, always cut the, the, oh, you can't really see it, eh? Next to the hook. There. Yeah. there you go. Make sure when you work with the the, um, the zonka, cut it to a point from underneath so that you get a nice taper on your zonka. Otherwise, you'll end up with a square end, and when it when the fly goes through the water, it won't swim properly. It'll it won't swim true. Mm. All right. So basically, you want it about the length of the shank. When you work with hair too, and you're coming across. The hair, a lot of younger tires will don't know how to get rid of this hair that they keep trapping. You just wet your fingers, okay, and you actually wet your, your zonka hair. Actually wet it a little bit, okay, and that way it separates very, very nicely, and you can actually tie it onto your hook very easily. Just a little handy tip. Okay, we want to tighten. I just want to measure that off there. Okay, another thing you need to do when you're tying zonka, or any tail for that matter, is I'm sure you all know you must come underneath the tail with your cotton above the hook at least three or four times pull it upwards like that as you're coming because as you'll see now it sticks it keeps the tail up on the shank of the hook mm -hmm. if you're tying with marabou too you often have if you're casting heavy flies you may find it once it circles especially like with saltwater flies instead of putting a bit of nylon loop out there just come underneath the tail three or four times okay just pull that back so basically all I've done here now is I've tied a zonka concept. Now you can either tie chenille in to create the body. If you don't want to do that, you want even more action, you can cut this excess zonka off and you can do cross cut zonka. You all know what cross cut is. And you can wind that in as the body. I'm going to use the zonka body here. You could put a bit of red chenille in there if you wanted some more color, if it's maybe this time of the year. So we'll pop the chenille in there. Okay, we want about a third of the, the, the hook to be left for the head. If you enjoy fishing a fly very fast, some anglers like to fish exceptionally fast, um, then you could put a little bit of lead along the shank if you wanted to. I prefer to fish my streamers, I would rather fiddle with my lines, so I'll fish a DI-7 if I want to fish fast, and I'll fish a DI-3 if I want to fish slower. So the, the, my fly line will determine where my fly sits, and therefore I just change my speed on that. Most of you will fish an intermediate line, I personally don't enjoy an intermediate line at all. Okay, so we just tie the zonk in now. Okay, so basically what you're sitting with now is a, is a zonka that you're all accustomed to. There's nothing new there now that you've, you've seen that I've tied. Got a lot of action in the tail. If you're worried that the fish are a bit small, 
in the dam you're fishing you're getting a couple of mishits, you can always trim a little bit of the tail off with your nipper and then they won't bite short on the fly. Cut. When you do that, cut the material, not the hair. Yes, always come from underneath and cut on the, on the felt. Okay, um, I'm going to just put in some UV flash. Uh, a lot of a lot of flies today are tied with a lot of synthetic materials. I think they do have a place in the world of flies, but uh, many a times I've found too too much flash in a fly kills a fly. Uh, we've seen it definitely in the tiger waters. If you go with these beautiful flies, lots of flash and stuff in it, it uh, you end up actually pulling the flash out while you're fishing. So I tend to tie with less flash. If you want to put a bit more into this pattern, you can. I'm tying it down the length of the shank, not just in the tail. And I prefer the UV because it, it has a little bit more action in the water. I'll tie it down the entire length of the body on the side, creating a lateral line if one wants to call that. I need to put my glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll do that. This yeah. is a bit thin now. Okay, oh hell, I can see the fly. Okay, when you tie your flash, um, now I'm going to cut it off. Always bring your scissors in at a bit of an angle and then slowly move your scissors around as you're cutting it. Don't cut all the flash off at the same length, okay? Because that, that really does make a fly look quite silly in the water. Okay. Now, we... You can see that quite clearly there. All right, so basically you're left with a, with a zonk type fly. There it is there. Now, this is, this is where the fun starts. I, you can do a scalp and head. The quick way to do a scalp and head today, and which you people would probably like, is to use a brush here now. So you can make a brush up with fine little rubber legs, with various colors, and you create quite a rough, big, flowing head over the top. You can do it with those new scalp and heads. You can actually buy one of those heads, those flat heads, that you push on, and you put the cotton in the front here. That keeps it coming off. But what I am going to do for you, because it actually has a very nice pattern uh, and behavior in the water, is all of us have egg yarn, particularly this time of the year. And if you've ever owned egg yarn and you forget it in the sun or gets old, it loses its color. Because it's, UV, it's not UV treated. Okay? So all of us have a lot of egg yarn like this that's now useless. Okay? And it actually makes fantastic woolhead flies. All right, so if you've got, I bought a whole package. Here. If you guys don't have, come get some. And now I'm going to create the head with with messed up old egg yarn. Okay. And the nice thing about that is, if you don't want to do it, you can go buy it in black or red or whatever color you want. But um, I like to tie it in this sort of faded color here. I'll use this faded color. And then you use one of your marker pens. You can actually color the head in so you get quite a nice mottled effect on the head of the fly. And anything that's mottled for a trout is, is, is a good color. That's why you see all the rabbit strips these days are, are brown barred or black barred and they're trying to bring in feathers and colors like that. Okay, before we put the head on, just to put the little side, the paddles per se, you need to use a hen cape. A hen cape as you all know, has, has rounded feathers. It's not pointy feathers. Uh, if you had to use a cock feather here, it wouldn't have the same effect. So you want, you want two hen hackles. If you don't have a hen hackle here tonight, just come grab off this one here. You just strip the, hackle, the, the, the down part of the feather off. Like that. Okay, as you well know, a feather has a convex, convex, and concave shape. I want it to stand outwards. 
You can see that, huh? So I want it as a paddle. Tie that on there. So it actually forces water. Try to strip both feathers so they're the, the same size on either side. Right, now what you do is you take your egg yarn, which is very, very nice. Michael, before you do that, can you turn it 90 degrees so we can see what it looks like? The other way. What way? <laughs> okay. Just to give another idea. Notice how the feathers are pointing outwards. Now what you want the reason for that there is so that it pushes water. So as you strip it, so it'll push the water and then it'll go back to its format. Remember, it's something that you want to fish slowly and, 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 and work the fly, twitch the fly back the whole time. Okay? Okay. Take the egg yarn. Egg yarn is one of those materials, unfortunately, you need to have good scissors. If you haven't got scissors, good scissors, it's a nightmare to tie with. Okay. Try to... Un Unwind the egg yarn. Some of it has a, has a little bit of a twist in it like over here. Just try and get it nice and straight. And cut pieces off, I don't know, just short of an inch. You'll need four of those little pieces. If you're tying on a bigger hook, you can cut six pieces. Okay. Take the egg yarn and just open it up like that. Just so it becomes square. Like that. And the same with this one. Big. Put one on either side. Okay, take your thread. Not too tight. One, two, and three, hold it tight, and this is why I said I prefer a stronger thread. Keep it nice and tight, keep the tension there now, as you pull it all back. Could use a hair pusher if you wanted to there. Just push it back nicely like I've done there. Okay. And you do exactly the same with the next two pieces. Open it up like that. One on that side, one on this side. The trick is not to tight tight your first one or two wraps, is to get around it, get around it, and then pull it down. Not that tight. <laughs> Okay, just let's do that again. Show you how to break your thread. 
It's part of the, the lesson. and just tie it off. Very simple. Okay, in this, where it is now, you can see, you can see it's rather, it's rather scruffy, but it's still sticking together. Uh, like, hang on. There where the pink is. So you just take your scissors or a bobkin and just push it through. I want you to loosen up those, those so it's not bunching. So you actually get it nice and fluffy and loose before you start trimming it. Oh, I see that, Joe. Okay, um, clean it up a little bit because it would have quite a lot of fluff would have come off. Position your fly back to how you want it. Now, the one mistake you mustn't do in haste, rush in with the scissors and you end up snipping these little side feathers. So the first thing I want to do is I want to cut underneath. I want it straight underneath so that my gape of my hook is not impeded because I want to be able to hook up nicely. So we clean it up nice and straight. Once again, if your scissors aren't nice and sharp or they're not good scissors, you will really struggle to do what I'm doing now with egg yarn. It's a tough material to work with. Okay, turn it back. Now I push it out, pull it out sideways because I want to create, I want to create that sort of flat-headed look. So I'll actually hold my thumb down on it and I'll actually trim around in a circle. Like that. Take a little bit off the top. Don't cut the feather off. Yeah, very careful around the feathers. Okay, now let me just pull it around a little bit more for you. Okay, so now, can you see the flatness of the head coming in there? You can see that's a bit more scruffy here. But it takes on a lovely profile this and pushes a lot of water, which is what you want the fly to do. You can see the shape there. That's the flat head, very much like a barbel head. What are you trying to do here? And there it is there. Okay. Then you just take your, your permanent marker or one of those fancy cokies, and now you can play with it. Now you can you can you can put lines on it if you wanted to. You can bar it. If you want, like that, you don't see it very clearly on this lens, or you can color it in completely underneath. But it pushes a lot of water, this fly, and it works nicely. It catches big fish, too. Fishes at the bottom. Yeah. The yeah. I haven't had much success fishing streamers, you know, on sort of a floating line concept. I'd rather fish a little nymph like that or something. 
There we go. But if you if you had to see a bigger tadpole, that would be. Let's see if I can try and get a get a better look here for you. Like that. There, you get a better look now. That's how it looks in the water. Very effective flight when you're fishing. Any if you, questions? If you actually wet it. You look at it now. Now what do you see? There's a young frog. Yeah. And that, the bigger trout, love that. Absolutely love a fly like that. Thank you. Yeah.